here's an old tale of a bittersweet story of an old coal miner named Buck. There's some hard times in these old mountains, and these miners, they really had a hard time. Now keep in mind these little stories, that these stories are about forgotten and trying to be remembered. That's all I can do just to show images of the stories I try to tell. So the pictures I show are not really the actual pictures, but just images to tell the story. Now one thing about these old Appalachians, they're full of coal. These mountains are full of coal, and they've been mining these coal seams for almost 200 years. And it's still full of coal. This is a way of life for a lot of people in these mountains. They just nothing was nothing else to do. The old saying is it was moonshine, coal mine, or move on down the line. And that holds true. But I'm gonna take you back to a simpler time, back in the 20s and 30s, before modern mining, when they had to do it all by hand. Now this little story come to me from some of the old timers. As I was starting in the mines, they was leaving the mine. We're talking about middle 70s. And these old guys told me a story of an old guy they know called Buck. An old sad story, but a good story. And it took place right around just inside the Tennessee line, Claiborne County, way back in the early 30s. And they worked in a little old drift mine hand loading mines, shooting and loading. And this is the kind of mine that they worked before they had really electricity in. And they was probably 40, 50 men worked there. What they said, just a little old pony mine that they shot and load and load the coal out. And they had a good crew of men. And it wasn't no trouble to get a job in them days. If you had a strong back and willing to work, they gave you a job. And he lived in little old coal camps like this. Didn't have no running water, no electricity, outhouses. This is the kind of places it was up and down these Appalachians back in them days. The little coal fields up these holler, all up and down these mountains. And he started a little family, Buck did. He'd worked in the mines a few years. He had two little girls. And he worked hard. It's all he could do, just to put food on the table, the way times was in the, the Depression. And he'd walk home there every evening, just over the hill from the mines, down to the mine camp. Well, one day, they hand loading in the spring, and somebody came running up to them, saying something was going on outside. So they all quit and went outside. And when they got out there, They were absolutely speechless. Never seen such a thing. This don't happen in the mountains, but it does happen, but it is rare. It wiped out the coal camp, mines, the stores, but it didn't hurt the mines itself up on the mountain. And yes, he lost his wife and his two little girls. He was devastated. Devastated. Well, after they they buried them, I reckon there was over a hundred people died at this mine. That tornado just wiped it out. Well, he just couldn't stand it no more. He worked just long enough to pay off what he owed and get rid of everything that he could find. And he was not going to put up with this. He couldn't live with the memory. So he headed out, and he headed to eastern Kentucky. Now, back in them days, if you was a good worker, you could go around the mountain, you could go around the next county, you can even go to the next state. Coal mines was everywhere, and if you're willing to work, they'll put you to work. So he had to leave just to get this memory out of his head. He was so depressed, so depressed. Well, old Buck found him a mines in eastern Kentucky that needed some workers. 
and they paid cash. He didn't have to deal with that script. So he liked that ideal. So he needed to work somewhere, so he went to work at this mines. It was a little bit bigger mines, too. They was trying to up the electricity into this, and it was just switching over from mules to electrical power, using motors instead of mules. The cars, they'd pull them out, pull the coal out, bring them back in. But they still used mules in some parts of the mine. They just hadn't completely switched over. And the mines looked like this inside. They was way back in there. They was probably a couple of miles back in there. And they had a better mining camp too. This is what it looked like. A little bit more updated, a little bit bigger operation. But he didn't like that. As he worked on a little bit, a year or something, he saved up. It was just him. He saved him up a little place in a little house up a holler, a little piece of land, scratched out a living up there. And he had a company store just down the end of the holler there. So that was convenient for him. So he just worked day after day, kept to himself, worked with his buddies, hand loading his coal in his cars every day. And if you don't know what kind of mining was it, let me bring you up to speed. Back in them days, they used a cutting machine to cut under the coal, so it made it easier to shoot. And after they done that, they would drill with a breast auger, and they'd drill holes in a pattern where they could shoot the coal out. And they'd load the powder in there. They started using electric caps back way back then. They did without lighting a fuse. And after they shot it, they backed them cars in there. After they scaled the top and made it safe, they started hand loading them cars again. One car after another. And this is back really before they started using roof boats. They used timbers everywhere. Now, timbers will help a little bit on rock, but it's mostly a warning device that the tops are setting down. And what I mean by that is like this. Them timbers go to breaking like toothpicks. That weight's setting down on that mountain. So that's a scary feeling. But now when he wasn't working, he was to himself. He tried to keep his mind off a of family he lost. He would do a lot of squirrel hunting sane hunting, exploring, working around his little farm. He really loved that. Really loved it. Well, a couple of years went by. One day they was loading in a place, him and his buddy, and two timber men behind him working. And they was working this entry. The top wasn't very good, but they tried to work. And all at once they started hearing stuff behind them cracking in a poppet. They tried to run, but they couldn't make it. Well, he come to his senses. Only thing that saved his life is he tripped and fell next to that coal car and that rock hit the coal car and just pinned him up against it. And he hear it back and way up and behind that rock. He could hear somebody hollering for help. Somebody come to see what that rock fall was. But his buddies were gone. They didn't make it. No other sound. Well, I reckon they said it took them about two days to get to him. They had to just work their way into that rock. He was next to the face. And they had to sure it up. So it took them about two days, he said, to get to him. Slow, tedious work. Dangerous work, too. And while he was laying there, he had his lunch bucket within reach, so he did have some water. And while he was laying there, he'd just about just give it up. He'd just so depressed anyway. And he had a vision. That was his wife and his two babies. They said they was waiting for him. 
and they loved him, but it wasn't their time. It wasn't his time to go, to just hang on. And he reached for them what he could. They just faded away. And he just, he just give up. Next thing he knew, he woke up in a hospital in a nearby town. Addled, sore, but praise God, he, he was alive. It took him a few months to get over this, a few broken bones, a shattered ankle, and a little bit of head injury, but he got over it. And he just sitting around still thinking about that vision he seen of his wife and his baby. And he knowed what he had to do. He went to the church down the holler. Fast as he could get down there one evening. And he gave his heart to the Lord. He was baptized. Soon after, he started volunteering his time, helping out at the store, just volunteer, not asking for no pay. And they really liked him helping out. He wasn't able to work in mines no more. So he had to do something. He got to listen and see his old buddies. The miners coming in and out of the store. And they had a good time. They loved to see him. He loved to see them. But he got to hearing a lot of other little things in the store. Families in need. People having a hard time. This one over here. This one over there. This family over there. And that really broke his heart. Especially when he seen these little kids with no shoes, barefooted. It really broke his heart. He had a special place in his heart for these little kids. And he, not, he hated them when they done without eating. So he'd always, he'd sneak up with a, with a pair of shoes on the porch, some flyer, whatever. But he, he, he'd always try to help these little kids and families in need. And he never would tell nobody. He'd just sneak and do it. He'd just set it up on the porch. So he'd just listen in the store. And he'd hear everybody's problems. Everybody's got problems in their need. And it broke his heart. Well, he'd sneak up on the porch late in the evening, about dark, or whatever he could. And he'd set a box of groceries, shoe, even some toys, bag of cornmeal, flour, whatever they needed. He didn't have much, but he didn't need much himself. Because all he ever done, old pot of beans and some taters on the stove, all he did by himself. And he was happy, but he just loved to help the little families and kids. He loved to whittle too, and he liked to make little toys. He'd make little toys of animals and stuff and, and set it on the porch for the kids to find. And when he could find an old little doll somewhere in a store or something, he would put it away just to, to make some little child happy. And especially not in the mining camps of these old haulers that wasn't even in the mining camps. He knew these people had a hard time. Look at all these little kids. He'd try to give them a little something. He'd always hear the old guys talking around the store, so-and-so done this, and so-and-so done that, and they needed this. And that's how he, he got connected on doing this. But people finally figured out what he was doing. And he would work on stuff like this in his spare time, make little animals for the kids, 
especially for come Christmas time. Christmas time, he really had a good time between the store and the church and his own little projects. He loved making people happy, especially the, the less fortunate people. Giving out little baskets, he would, he would try to make his own little boxes to give out to people. He loved to make these little kids happy. In the store, knowed what he was doing, but he didn't. He never told nobody nothing. They just figured it out or seen him once in a while, and they really appreciated it over time. But one year, he didn't show up for a few days. Went a week. So the people at the store got with other people. They went up and checked on him, and found him dead in the kitchen where he's sitting at the table with them. And the whole community mourned him. They took care of him, just like he's one of their own. A family member. And they missed him so bad. Even the little kids really missed him. They loved him. But his time had finally come. And he's with his fellow miners in his little graveyard. Finally at rest. Finally with his family. But he's not there in the ground. He's with the good Lord. I hope you enjoy these little stories. They're just forgotten stories of our past, of these mountains. It don't matter if it's mining, farming, or whatever. There's so many little stories that's going away in these mountains, and we need to remember, pass them on to our children. So I want to thank you for watching. God bless you, and I'll see you next time.